You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing a recap from Raw from uh, December 19th. Or the 18th, 18th but close. Yes, I, I, I knew it was going to be <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it was there for you to read. I know, but That's I the whole point of taking notes. You ain't got nothing, right? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't paying yeah. attention. So, what'd you think of Raw? It was good. Yeah? It was, uh... Not much happened, no, but it was... But it was entertaining. It was serviceable. Yeah. Big but, announcement at the end of it. So, I feel like WWE is starting to turn into New Japan. Um, they love these six-man tags or oh, six-person tags. A lot of them happened this yeah. week. Uh, a lot of them. I don't know what the deal with that is, but hey, whatever. Content is content. It's true. As and long as it's entertaining, that's all I care about. Yeah, and you don't have like these really long backstage segments or like stupid. Yeah, they've things. really cut that down on Raw. Yeah, so like you can't really complain if they're focusing the action in the ring. So what do we need the dead time of year to learn? To cut stuff down? No, because they're just going to start doing it again once. <laughs> I guess so. In the build to WrestleMania, because that's when they think people are going to start watching more. Yeah. Meh, whatever. It's just, it's just for the diehards who are watching it when no one else is watching it. I guess that's true. Nah, it's not. I mean, how many casual yeah. fans do they actually have? Not many. I, I, I can't, it's, it still boggles my mind that they're still catering to the casual fan. Like, I understand a little bit, but... It's dumb. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the majority of people that are watching your show probably subscribe to the network already. Exactly. So, you know, but whatever. Because I don't think there's people that are just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy this month. I'm going to buy that month. I'm oh, gonna yeah, buy that's this month. dumb. It's $10 a month. It's perfect. Yes. It's the perfect dollar amount. It's true. For, Look at certainly that. Certainly for what it is. Right now, we're just talking about the network, how great it is. It is great. It is. <laughs> Anyway, yes. All right, so uh, the this Raw starts with Angle coming out. The Royal Rumble <laughs> title match, because I, I read that as the Royal Rumble match itself. Oh, That didn't yeah. make any sense. Man, reading is really... Uh... I'm tired. <sighs> anyway, yeah. so um, yeah, because the week before, Braun and uh, Kane had a title uh, match to determine who will face Brock Lesnar. Yes. This makes a lot more sense. Not that. unfortunately happened. Yes. So uh, he comes out. And then Braun comes out and says that I want the title shot. Right. And then Kane comes out and says, says I want the title yes, shot. Yes, because Brock has never <laughs> beaten me. Or I think he did like once. Kane? Yeah. Um, he or says that times. he's never been a victim of Brock yeah. Lesnar. Yeah. So whether or not that's the truth, well, we, it doesn't we don't matter. No. They're never going to tell the truth. Exactly. Completely. So it doesn't make a difference. But yeah. Eh. So Kane has that to say. And then Lesnar and Heyman come out. And then I think Lesnar started charging the ring, right? Well, well, he um, did his spiel. He came out by himself. He's like, "Don't you think it would make sense to have the champion decide who's facing?" Oh, him? right, right, right. Yes. Um, and then Lesnar comes out, and then they walk to the ring, mm -hmm. and then he goes into the ring. They all yeah. look like they're ready to fight. At this point, Kurt Angle's starting to walk toward the rope and goes, "Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a triple threat match." And uh, oh, it's true, it's true. And he starts getting through yeah, the ropes. That was funny. It was good. That was really funny. It was good actually. timing. Yeah. Because he was like pretending to be scared. Yeah. So. Which is funny because he's he's faced all three of these men. Um, did he face? I don't even know if he faced Kane very much. I'm sure their paths had crossed. I I know. But granted, if Brock's and Kane's really never crossed to have a feud, it's possible. Yeah. Um, because Kane was largely a Raw. Yeah. And Angle was SmackDown. Guy. Yeah. That's true. So. Anyway, that's yep. not important. But yeah, so Lesnar. Hits, knocks Braun out of the ring, yeah. and then he sets up Kane and hits him with an F5. Yeah, it was not a very, very pretty. Yeah, it was not very good looking. No, 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 no. So, um, and then Brock and Heyman go to the the entrance, and then they turn around. Kane gets up, and Brock was up, yeah. pretending like he was <gasps> concerned about Kane Can't getting up. Somebody sat up. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. So. So up next, we get an announcement that it's going to be Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe. Mm -hmm. So Seth comes out. And then all of a sudden, Jason Jordan walks out. And at this point, JoJo is announcing that Jason Jordan is Seth's opponent. Yes. And then... Spoiler <laughs> alert. And then she was just, like, cut off. Yep. Um, well, they cut the mic because, like, yeah, shut yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, no, <laughs> I know. You're ruining um, the illusion. So, yeah, Jason Jordan has a microphone, and he says that he knows Seth wants Joe, but he also wants Joe. Yeah, because and for some reason, 
um, he can't let go. Well, Jordan's obsessed with losing. Yeah. That's really what oh. it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he basically tells Seth that he's going to have to wait his turn. And then, so you know, him and Seth have a back and forth. Joe comes out and, you know, he's... What do you say? I don't really care who I face. Yes. Just one of you. Mm-hmm. And then what is... Well, he said, how about the two of you fight? fight right. And then, and the, then w- the loser or the winner will fight me. And yeah. then I can put them to sleep. Yes, that's right. And then... Uh, and didn't Jason Jordan attack Seth from behind? Didn't he push well, him? Well, what happened was Seth grabbed the microphone mm-hmm. and he's like, I don't have time for this. I already have the match with Joe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm fighting him. I don't have... I'm not going to... I'm not going to waste my time on this scrub and then at that point in time jason jordan attacks seth yeah. and then so it's like all right that's, that's it. it let's it's go on. Yeah, yeah yeah okay like that's ver- right. very much like roman did yeah. where it's like he poked the bear too much mm-hmm. yeah. and uh so so then we had a match made. so now we have seth rollins versus jason jordan yep uh with samoa joe sitting at ringside yes just you know with his towel and getting angry yep um but yeah this was uh they gave this a lot of time. Yeah, it's true. They, but, uh, this one is. It was old. almost nine o'clock by the time this match was over. I was going to say they went on until almost to like at least a quarter to nine. Yeah. Um, it was probably 10 too. So, Jason Jordan does a lot of his picking up and mm-hmm. moving people around. Yeah. So, it was a This Is Boring chant that. Absolutely. Was, okay. I yeah, wasn't yeah. sure if it was This Was Awesome or This Was no, Boring. This Boring. Uh-huh. They, they really don't like Jason Jordan. Oh, I know that. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, the match itself wasn't horrible, but the no. fans were not happy yeah, with it. I think, I think the law, um, the public or the popular opinion is that Jason Jordan really isn't, uh, someone that they Stop should be shoving pushing. him down our throats. Yeah. We're, we want Roman instead of him. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> it's true though. That's the way Roman was getting cheered against him. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Rollins throws Jason Jordan outside mm-hmm. and then he like just stares right. at joe and then and then he throws jason, jason jordan, jordan into, into joe. joe that's right okay <laughs> yeah and then, and then and he hits uh joe with oh, the yeah, super kick yeah he, and he just fell like a ton of yep. bricks so that, that was a nice spot yeah joe's very good at selling yeah. Oh, yeah. so fantastic he got a good pop. he always gets a good pop oh people love joe yeah yeah but yeah then we go in the ring and rollins hits the knee yep the and, knee yeah and gets the pin <laughs> so dumb yeah. Yep. And um, then what, Seth and Joe fought after the match, right? Yeah, well, I think Joe ran into the ring, and then the two of them fought, mm-hmm. and Joe beats up Rollins. Yeah. <laughs> then we go backstage, and Jason Jordan, Seth, and Dean were there, right? Yes. With... Well, it started with... Uh, oh, Kurt Seth Angle. And... Oh. Started, well, it started with Kurt Angle playing with his phone. phone. Yeah. Like all backstage <laughs> segments start. And, and then Seth came over with Dean behind him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Jason Jordan walked up afterward. That's yeah. right. And uh, because it was funny, because Seth goes, I want, I want Samoa Joe, despite mm-hmm. the fact that he technically earned the match with him, by right? Beating Jason yeah. Jordan. Mm-hmm. Then Dean's like, Yeah, I kind of yeah. want a piece of yeah. him too. After last week, right? They fought last week. Yeah, and it was like completely. <laughs> it was somewhat unprovoked though, because it's like, Yeah, it's you Dean. know, I, I need something to do. Yeah. And then Jason Jordan walked up, and of course he wants him too. Yeah. So then Kurt says, "You're Even- gonna make a six man tag tonight. It's gonna yes. be." You three versus the bar and Samoa Joe. Yes. So, so Rollins and Jason Jordan pulling double duty, mm-hmm. which is funny because still a bunch of people that aren't getting on the on the show. Well, at least uh, Titus Worldwide was on the show later on. I guess you can call it that. Yeah, they, they were on the <laughs> they show. Made an appearance. Yeah. They did. Anyway. Yep. So uh, up next we have uh, Bray Wyatt doing a promo about Woke and Matt Hardy. Yeah. And uh, he says that he's going to end him. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to be doing a lot of this, I feel like. Yeah. But I like the way they did it this week mm-hmm. rather than it wasn't the back, the back and, forth. and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just Bray talking. Mm-hmm. It wasn't terrible. It was a little hard to follow because, you know, he talks weird. He's a cult leader. He yeah. to... he's... And then. Not meant to be understood. And then Hardy's later on was probably a little harder to follow. Yeah. A couple <laughs> things that. Um, anyway, interesting, it, but yeah, this this should be this could lead up to a good feud. Mm-hmm. You know, we have high hopes, and you know, for yeah. now, it's oh, not so too bad. apparently they have added a match between Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy to the 205 Live house shows. 
because I'm guessing the ticket sales have not been good. Really? Yes. And I don't think they're slimming Bray Wyatt down to be in the I 205 hit. roster. That's for Cassius Ona. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Should pitch that storyline. That's weird. Yeah. So up next, Finn Balor comes out, and then we hear it's going to be a handicap match. Yep. And, and I started to cringe because I knew exactly who it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's going to be against Mr. Rush. Yes. So the hell did Finn do to deserve this crap? Um, he's posted, not being over. <laughs> he, he, he posted pictures online kind of just refuting what Vince said. That's it. You go against the boss, you're, uh... What if you bust him open on live TV? <laughs> then super Kevin kick Owens him and then hit him with a frog splash. Pretty good with them. <laughs> then you gotta fight my son. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're damned to feud with Shane for the rest of your time. Oh, that'll kill anybody's career. Exactly. Um, so, uh, but yeah, basically, this is a normal handicap Yeah, match. so it's one-on-one with the other person outside the ring. Yeah. Or on the apron. Finn pretty much had control. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a couple points in time where they got the upper hand, yeah. but um, they get frustrated, the Mr. Raj, I mean, mm-hmm. and uh, they start beating him up, yep. and they get, guess, get past the count of five, and then they get disqualified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then they're getting beaten up, and then some music plays, and I'm like, I don't recognize that yeah. music. And I'm like, who are they going to send to yeah. Finn? <laughs> and apparently it's the 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 debut of the 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 guy who is supposed to debut the Tomorrow next night. night. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hideo Itami mm-hmm. came for the save. Yeah. And they were talking about how they uh, they work together in Japan and stuff like that. Or right, they, yeah, they yeah, yeah. They knew each other from Japan. Well, I think that was, he was his tag partner when he, in Finn's debut. I think they said as well in uh, NXT. Maybe. Yeah, I, I thought that's what they it. said. That was a long time ago. It's hard to take anything the commentary team says. Well, uh, I was. <laughs> well, for me, it's kind of hard to catch like some of the things they say anyway, because I'm like, if I'm in the middle of writing stuff. Fair enough. Yeah. Very good. And you know, usually Michael Cole, like you said, kind of tune them out. Um. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So uh, they go to commercial. They come back, and it's a tag match apparently. Yeah. Um, Kurt Angle made. The tag match. Yeah, it's so dumb when they say that. Um, but yeah, basically, it was, you know. Annoying. So what what we saw on Raw uh, is that a cruiserweight is able to hang with the regular wrestlers. Well, the cruiserweight is <laughs> le- is able to hang with jobbers technically. I guess that's true. And it was true. two cruiserweights, by the way. <laughs> technically speaking, you are correct. Yes, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> At this rate, you're probably right. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not surprised. That he, I mean, I'm honestly surprised that he wasn't on the like the 205. Well, it's because show. he was not so the show, but I mean the uh, like the house shows and stuff rather than Bray and. Oh, that would make more yeah. sense, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, put Finn versus uh, Seth on there. <laughs> well, that wouldn't make any sense. So. Seth's over 205, but well, that and he's a face. Both face. Yeah, I know, but I mean, if you really want to put butts in the se- seat uh, in the seats, Finn so versus speak. Enzo. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll put butts in the seat. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, Tommy hits uh, Curtis Axel with the go to sleep. Yep. And uh, that was it. Which apparently fans have been mad saying that Hideo Tommy stole that from Punk, even Despite though he the fact used it prior to the, Punk. He's the one who in, uh, came up with the go yes. to sleep, supposedly. So, yeah. yeah, you know, whatever. Yep. Fans are dumb. Mm hmm. All right. So, <laughs> speaking of dumb, uh, I was listening to the Killing the Town podcast with Cyrus and Storm. And uh, Lance Storm was talking to Cyrus about Christmas time. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Cyrus is a giant Grinch. So he called all the Christmas shoppers Marks. He's like, yeah, there's a bunch of Marks shopping and out on the roads. I can't stand these people. It's so funny. Good stuff. Um, rather than mouth breathers or whatever else you want to call them. That makes sense, too. Yep. So uh, we get a backstage interview with Renee interviewing Cedric Alexander about his number one contendership matchup with Drew Gulak. Yes. And uh, she basically asks him if that he is undervaluing or overlooking Drew Gulak. Yeah, and because I guess he was talking about how he's going to beat Enzo. Yeah, the usual spiel. Yes. And he's like, no, I'm not overlooking him, mm-hmm. but when I mm-hmm. beat him. Yeah, or the only time I'll be overlooking him is when I'm standing over him or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. it was kind of your typical scripted promo. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. All right. And that brought us to the match. Mm-hmm. Um, Drew Gulak versus Cedric Alexander, obviously. Yes. So uh, Enzo Amore comes out with Drew. Yes. And uh, 
he has to go, of course, about himself and his nonsense that he that falls out of his mouth. He was really driving home the, the Star Wars references. Yeah, yeah, call him, you know, trash talker, Skywalker. Skywalker. Yes, yes, yes. And then Kulak grabs the microphone. Yes, he's like, I always thought of myself as the Jar Jar Binks. So. That was awesome. It's like, of course you would. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, he says, in uh, in celebration of this match, mm-hmm. I, uh, I I wanted to thank I wanted to thank Enzo with my special PowerPoint yeah. presentation. Yeah. Oh well, he did call him his best friend, right? Yeah. At one point, and Enzo was kind of like, "We're not friends." Friends. <laughs> <laughs> um. So he goes to start the PowerPoint presentation, mm-hmm. but uh, Cedric Alexander cuts him off. Yeah, not a surprise. So Enzo goes up the ramp and to the commentary desk where this kind of overshadowed the match i felt like well it was supposed to i know but it was a good match that's why i just hate i just hate that i guess but you know it yeah. uh, it does make sense yeah the oh storyline yeah. makes sense um well, obviously because they're just his lackeys anyway it's true uh so so yeah like you said it was, it was a pretty good match between the two of yeah. them yeah there's a weird spot where Oh, when they fell? Cedric, well, it went to suplex Gulak over the ropes, mm-hmm. but Gulak kind of held on to him, and then he suplexed him back out, and then it looked like they ended up in a DDT position on the floor. It was just very, very odd yeah, spot. It was, it was not, it mm-hmm. didn't really seem like it was very intentional. It kind of just no, yeah. fell into their laps. Yes, but um, of course, Enzo and uh, Graves were arguing back and forth the entire time, mm-hmm. which... And uh, I think Michael Cole said that Gulak and him were friends. And he's like, who said we're friends? That's right. I'm not friends. He works yeah. for me. Which is funny because um, I had Twitter open at the time. Uh-huh. And Nia Jax had posted, hey, Enzo, check your DMs. And then all of a sudden, Enzo got up and started walking away. And well, like, they, they referenced yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. The commentary yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty funny. Yeah, I was like, huh. It is good. Gu- it is nice that they do stuff like that because you know it's like you can tie up loose ends that way easily. Well, that and it feels like they're trying because they ke- a lot of times in the past they used to just say things mm-hmm. that happened without that's any true. kind of proof that they yeah. happened. Yep. Um, but yeah, so Enzo at this point Enzo gets up and starts walking to the back. Yes. And Gulak's Drew Gulak like, notices Enzo. Where are you going? Yeah. Exactly, and then Cedric hits the lumbar check, and that's the end. Yeah. Um, Gulak got busted up pretty good. Yeah. His nose was bleeding and everything. Oh, yeah, because the the backstage segment happened right after it. Yes. So uh, Enzo's walking down the hall with his phone in his hands, Mm -hmm. um, and then he runs into Nia Jax. uh, So awkward. Yeah, a little bit. so weird. So she was... She said something about, like, shouldn't you be checking on your friend, Drew? Yeah. He's like, why do people keep on using that word? <laughs> um, yeah, so then, <laughs> then Gulag interrupts, and you just see, like, uh, tissues or whatever oh, stuffed, yeah. or gauze yep. stuffed up his nose, yep. and he just looks like an absolute wreck. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry I lost. lost. Yeah. yeah. And then I is kind of like, yeah, I'm going to leave you two. You, you come find me when... Uh, when you two are finished or whatever he yeah. said. Or said, I'll be thinking of you and then put her hand on his chest, right? Something like that. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, exactly. And then uh, Gulak's like, well we, well, we could go over the match and see what I did wrong. Right. And then Enzo goes, you did everything <laughs> wrong. And then he just storms off. Oh, man. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, at least they're actually building storyline on Raw with the cruiserweights. You mean like intertwining them? I mean, no. I mean, they're just u- using Raw, Raw as a to, platform oh, okay. as well, rather yeah. than just and everything s- happening on two hundred five and, and then having just get a t- random, throwaway match, yeah. random tag team matches, right. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Oh, did you see what happened on two hundred five last night? No. Well, apparently, someone launched a water bottle at Kalisto as he was laying on the floor. The guy got kicked out. Of the- I think he got the police were called and everything. Uh huh. But yeah, I saw the video. It looks like a nasty shot. Was it a full water yeah. bottle? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Ah, stupid people. Uh, so up next, we had Asuka versus Alicia Fox. This was the match we were supposed to get last week, right? Yes, but it was interrupted yep. by and the absolution. This was not a surprise that Asuka, Asuka won, won with the norm bar. Mm-hmm. Very uh, obvious. Yeah. Alicia Fox still sporting the captain's hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, so up next, we have the six-man tag we talked about earlier with uh, 
And when this was announced, I'm like, I guess that's going to be the main event. Right, that's what I thought, too. Yeah, but apparently not. No. The main event at the, the 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock hour? Yeah. No, yeah. 10 o'clock. No, the yeah, 9 o'clock yeah. hour. It, yeah, main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beginning of the 10 o'clock hour. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, this was Jason Jordan, Seth, and Dean versus The Bar and, and Samoa Joe. Um, so, I mean, the outcome of this match was... It looked like they kind of threw together a quick finish because mm-hmm. i don't i don't know if they just got this, us all no or... no no there's no way that dean wasn't that that was 100 percent intended yeah oh the way yeah, they yeah, did it, it yeah. they but made it look like it yeah. was a quick finish yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was absolutely the way they meant script because that way his arm was already it's taped been up. like that since he took that drop on the table at hell in a cell when they were up on the stage. And then you remember he had that nasty cut on his elbow? It wasn't at Helena, so you're talking about... Um, I'm sorry, TLC. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, when he... I don't remember if the bar threw him through a table or something like that. When they were up toward the stage area. Uh-huh. And then he was, like, cut up. And oh, then the oh, next oh. night on Raw, ever since then, he's had the, the yes. brace on his elbow. Yes. And apparently he needs elbow or surgery and stuff like that. Yeah, but so... But we'll get into that later on. He, um... But yeah, the, this was 100% scripted. Story, yeah. Because it just obviously... Yeah, like, he didn't. he wasn't in the match really at all. No. And usually when you have like a, like a visible presence of mm-hmm. like medical staff, then that's when you usually know it's a, it's a work. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, they had, they were taking But they played of it off per- very well. Oh, no, well. it, yeah, it, it yeah. looked well. Yeah. It looked legitimate. Yeah. But, you know... Then what happened backstage? Yeah, yeah. that kind of spoke towards right. it. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, the Seth is kind of distracted. He gets, he goes back into the ring, gets kicked in the head yeah. by Sheamus. Well, yeah, the events that led up to that was, I guess, Dean, uh, Joe, and Cesaro were on the outside, and oh, Seth yes, hit, hit a the... suicide dive, and it looked like De- he collided with Dean, I guess, and Dean kind of hit the cameraman, too. Uh-huh. It was just a weird spot. Yeah. And then you see Dean go over and sit down against the guardrail, mm-hmm. and the medical person attended to him, and then Seth, like, everybody was kind of looking that way, and Seth rushed toward back in the ring, got hit with a brogue kick, and then pinned by Cesaro. Cesaro. Yeah. Because Joe was even signaling for the referee to get in. It was just a... It, it was well done. Yeah. It really was. So... So yeah, yeah, it was uh, probably was one of the more unique ways that they ended their matches uh, between yeah. the Shield and uh, sure. the Bar. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so up next we uh, had lim- a limo. Yeah, and uh, it was Stephanie McMahon. She comes out of the limo. Yeah. So I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. I honestly thought it might have been the Miz. Yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah, pulled yeah. up on the, in the limo before. That's too. true, and I think he's scheduled to be back soon. Yeah, that, well, that's because yeah. I heard rumors that he might be coming back to challenge Roman. Mm-hmm. So, but Roman. they announced next week that it'll be John Cena versus Roman on the Christmas edition of yes. Raw. Well, they didn't apparently... announce the match. They just said John Cena is going to be there. Oh, I thought they announced it later on. Uh, nope. They oh. just said John Cena will be back for the Christmas. All right. Well, it's going to be John Cena and Roman. Oh, I know that. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to yeah. happen for um, a while, but but apparently, I guess they're having trouble selling tickets, which is not oh, a surprise. Really? Yeah a shock all right still think it's silly but hey whatever yeah anyway yep so uh up next we have matt hardy's retort to uh to bray wyatt's Mm -hmm. thing from earlier on and he was playing chess with a fish yes with fish (laughs) (laughs) apparently the fish was uh napoleon yes that's what he said yes Mm -hmm. so apparently i guess when you conquer lots of countries you get made into a fish in a later life I don't know. I guess so. Man's crazy. He is. Uh, so they definitely he, need to iron that curtain behind him or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, it's all meant to be look sloppy. <clears throat> I know. Um, Just can't wait till he fights the kangaroo again. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, mm-hmm. uh, the, the whole thing ends with actually a pretty good metaphor with uh, with uh, the chessboard. Yeah. Where he says that he's using his woken army to take out the um the king and queen mm-hmm. which were bray and sister Abigail. yeah so it was yeah. actually it was it made sense and it was actually pretty yeah, yeah, yeah so even even if his nonsense is you mm-hmm. know the ramblings of a madman it it still you know it works yeah it's it's always nice when you know that the person behind the crazy is like smart and you know knows what he's doing mm-hmm 
Because, you know, with Bray, like, you kind of have a feeling that he's kind of just rambling. <laughs> Whereas everything that Matt does, you know he's There's thought. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. So There's definitely thought behind him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we go backstage, and I guess Dean is getting checked on by medical personnel. Mm-hmm. And then what is, all three of them attack him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, so they all rush him. Joe and the bar attack him, and then they end up putting his arm in, or his elbow in a, like a, was it like a, it was a case? Like, well, they, they called it like an equipment yeah, chest. Yeah, equipment case. Yeah, 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 I would say something like that. So, and the, the rolling storage yeah. cases, yeah. So they, they slam they the top Slam arm. his elbow yep. into it or his arm. And that's how we write off Dean Ambrose. And he's going to be out for up to six months. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big loss. It's true. And there goes anything with the Shield from uh, now on, even though they've kind of started separating that's them That's not a true. Bit. They could very easily put Seth and Roman together. The three of them. Well, obviously. He won't, he won't be there. But that was the whole point but of we're what gonna I have, said. It's going to be Seth, Roman, and Kurt Angle in a, in a six-man <laughs> tag at uh, Elimination Chamber. Oh, yeah? Why not? I don't know. They don't want to. They don't want to have. Stop! Stop with that. <laughs> um, they're not going to have Roman defend the IC title anytime soon. No, they probably will. But they probably won't have him defend him. I would assume he'll much. drop it at some point. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Any hoo ha. Yep. So up next. Oh up. no. Up. Go we ahead. Can, all right, I'll take it. We have the returning revival versus Heath Slater and Rhino. Yes, match of the night. Sure. <laughs> um. Not really a huge match here, but we did see backstage that Dana Brooke was taking notes yeah, that for was Titus Worldwide. She was like dressed like a secretary, mm-hmm. and the two of them were kind of just standing behind yeah, her. They were watching weird. the match from their weird angle like they normally do. Yes. But uh, not a surprise here. So Heath Revival Slater. get the win with the Shatter Machine on Heath Slater. Yes. And we go backstage. Because you got to keep Rhino strong. Well, yeah. Well, it's funny because Rhino and Heath Slater both took turns beating dash wilder on main event <laughs> really <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah so we go backstage and kurt angle walks up to Heath slater and rhino and basically tells him yeah they have to toughen up and he Slater's like are we getting fired i need I this job I, got, I need this job i got kids and rhino said i don't remember what rhino said but something like you gotta be like me or something like that yeah he but, needs to toughen up yeah he's like what's that mean yeah, yeah, and that's when he said it'd probably be like me. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah. So up next, this was a little surprising. No, this was a good. I, no, the way they good. did it. it was oh yeah, because I it was like, we haven't seen Elias, and last week he wasn't on the show. Yeah. And two weeks ago he fought Roman. I was like, uh oh, he's got a <laughs> shovel out. Yep. <laughs> so uh, Elias comes out, and uh, he's uh, they were in the New England area. Yes. So uh, he trash talks Tom Brady, mm-hmm. and saying that uh, something about breaking rules yeah. and stuff like that. He uh, Stone Gold had Elias on his podcast this week. It was pretty good. Oh, he did. Yeah. Huh. Um, and then uh, he says that he will be the f- the first official entrant to the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then he starts playing a song for Roger Goodell. Yes. The, uh, he is the uh, chair- chairman. No, he's the commissioner of the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, so while he's singing his song, <laughs> Sasha Banks comes out. Well, he announced that he was going to be entered in the Royal Rumble this year. I said, oh, did you? I said that. I wasn't listening. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it. Anyway. I hope he wins. Sa- Sasha comes out, and then he goes again, because now he has an audience. Mm-hmm. And then Mickey comes out, and then he starts again, and then Bailey comes out. And uh, and he just starts oh. walking up the ramp, and Bailey goes, "Hug," <laughs> and he just keeps walking. Yep, it was pretty funny. Yeah. actually. Bailey's like, "All right, whatever." Mm-hmm. And now we have another six woman tag match. Oh. This was announced earlier. Yeah, so yeah, yeah was, got it. Yep. Um, so this was the uh, the three of them. Yeah, the three of them versus Absolution. Absolution. So yeah, this match didn't last very long. Mm-mm. Now it started pretty late. Yeah. Um. So what happened was kind of similar to what happened with the handicap match earlier, mm-hmm. where um, they kind of got frustrated, and it was Sonya and Mandy who uh, pretty much just beat up on, uh, I think it was Bailey. Probably. Oh, no, Sasha. No, it was, yeah, Sasha. It was Sasha. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, after a pin. Oh, pin attempt. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, yes, yeah, uh, Sasha was getting pinned, and she kicked out, and then mm. the two of them started, started beating, beating on yeah. her. So um, then the ref throws the match out. Yes, and then Nia Jax mm-hmm. comes out because they were to defend, I guess, Sasha. Um, defend and then, the women's honor. Yes. She takes out uh, Mandy and Sonya. Yep. And then Paige actually gets Nia she, Jax off Yeah, she feet. hit her with a chop block behind the, you know, the leg, and then she went down. Yeah. And then the rest of the locker room comes out. Yes, the entire Everyone. women's locker room. All 11 of them. <laughs> well, Is that... There's another five. Yeah. I think. Right, fair enough. No, another yeah. four. Yeah. Because there is 11 Dana, total. Alexa, Mickey. No, no Mickey, Mickey was, was the match. Uh, Alicia Fox, Asuka. So it was four. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway. Mm. So uh, they start fighting all over the place. Yep. And then uh, Stephanie comes out to cease the fighting. Mm-hmm. And then she goes on about how... Yeah, every, um, everybody just stops yes, in the they, ring. Yes, they do stop when they kinda the music like hits. They kind of like almost like a line. Yeah. So um, she says that um, a couple years ago they started the women's revolution and that's turned into the women's evolution. And then she referenced the match between Alexa and Sasha in the Middle East. Mm, yeah, a first, couple weeks ago, yeah, WWE's first time ever. Which I'm glad they said that because it, TNA did go to the and mm-hmm. did it. Well, you know, I think that they probably got a lot of backlash from when they said it probably. last week. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then she says that, "How about we make history one more time?" And she said that on January 28th we'll have the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, yeah, they announced that. That's it's big news. Huge. Yeah. Um, so. And it's it's cool because it brings an element of, you know, like, like oh maybe maybe someone's gonna get a push that you weren't right. expect. So, yeah, some, that's the best. Like similar to Carmella with the money in the bank. Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's a great opportunity for mm-hmm. building new storylines yeah. and progressing people's careers. The way it was introduced was odd. Well, yeah, because it was kind of. It, all the women were just cease fighting, like you yeah. said, and kind of were all then excited, which I understand, like you had said earlier, like that it, this is huge for the women. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it was but just yeah. odd. But, yeah, like I said, uh, rumored to be 30 women. 30? Yep. I didn't think that they'd go 30. That's rumored. Yeah. So, apparently, we're going to get it's probably gonna, Legends, NXT. Oh, that means that Trish and Lita are going to be in it. I guarantee at least one of them is. Probably. You yeah. got way too excited. No, I'm, but I'm just, I like being right. That's what it is. I almost guarantee one. All right, so what if you're it. wrong? I'm just going to pretend like I never said it. <laughs> I will bring up the video evidence. That's fine. Okay. I will deny it. All right. Anyway. But we will talk more about that in our Women's Royal Rumble discussion video, which we will post later on in the week. Yes. Um, but yeah, that was the end of Raw, and this has been our review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.